Let's close eyes, take breaths. <sighs> Come into your body. Come into this beautiful vessel. Feel where you're sitting on the chair and just relax for a moment. Let your body soften. Let your breathing soften. Come to a place inside that's just a gentle you, a soft you, a receptive you. And let your next breath be for your physical body, for the life that comes from living in this world. Just breathing physical breaths. And then come into heart breaths. Let that be next. Breathing into the wisdom of your heart with gratitude and appreciation. Just saying a silent thank you inside for the wisdom that your heart brings to your life. And the peace that you feel being connected to your heart. And as you continue with your next breaths, feel your spiritual connection. Feel the greater self that you are. The higher self that's inside of you. And breathe your appreciation into that place. Your body, your heart, and your wisdom together, forming this beautiful package of you, this lifetime, this perfect, sacred, and magnificent you here to receive, here to experience, here to transform, perhaps. And here to feel the love that's in the room with this family, that's in the room from this land, and that comes to this room with the love and the honoring of the human from Cryon. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. We continue awareness. Not necessarily information that you didn't have. I want you to sit and be peaceful and listen. As we discuss another attribute of Gaia. Today will be letter A. And letter A is going to stand for Akash. Now is when you can say, and accurately to some degree, my Akash is a record of my life. It is a record of my soul's energy in the expressions of living on earth. It is not necessarily then related to Gaia. In addition, it is a product of awareness given at that creation point. Whether it is an Adam and Eve or whether it's a Pleiadian, you still have the seeds of truth being implanted in human beings of right and wrong, dark and light, awareness. That is when the Akash began. And so you would say, therefore, it is not one like yesterday of a, of a genealogy where you're part of the dust and the dirt of the earth, of the very soil. 
And you would say, so you can't really relate that as much to Gaia or perhaps at all. I want you to sit and be peaceful with a message that is grander than you thought. First of all, let me remind you that the partnership with Gaia is all about your experience. The crystalline grid on this planet, often called the Gaia grid, is part of you and the Earth. It did not come with the planet. It was set up by those who seeded you. It wasn't always here. It was here for you. It is a rememberer of human emotion and akash. It remembers things that take place only with humans. It helps to give you feedback. It is a fast-track device of consciousness. Example, if you are sensitive and if you go to perhaps a cemetery or perhaps even more so the scene of an ancient battle and you walk on the planet right there where it all took place a sensitive will feel it especially in a battlefield there will be the dying the sorrow the pain some have even said they can hear the cries of those who were calling the names of their mother as they stared into the dirt. And I ask you yet again, human being, what is the mechanism of that? You don't simply automatically feel history. That's not what the human is built for. It had to be transmitted to you. It had to be remembered somehow by the dirt of the earth. Gaia, the crystalline grid, is responsible, therefore, for tempering your akash. It remembers what you've done. It gives feedback of what you have done to others who come there. Right now, the crystalline grid remembers what humans think is the most rememberable thing and that is fear, horror, and trauma. There'll come a day when humanity remembers celebration and joy equally. Instead of the bias you have now, which you can clearly see on your news. And when that occurs, it will then reflect your consciousness as a new human. Is it possible that there is a Gaia attribute that is married or allied to your Akash? Oh, stay tuned, there's more. But just that starts to show you that Gaia is not separate from your Akash. The planet itself has been here through everything you have lived through. In this very room, old souls, both genders, guaranteed. Small, gentle women who in the past yielded a very strong sword. Warriors, you were. We've said this before, big men who had many children. You had the experience of humanism and everything that you accomplished and did and felt through birth and death many times 
collected and stored in your DNA. Available when you became a bit more aware, which is now. That is the system. But all through it, you've been on the planet. And the planet has seen you, reacted to you, worked with you. The crystalline grid remembering it all. A video was given you today that those who are not here will not relate to. A child was taken back to his former life. He said he was a soldier who was killed and when he went to the place where he visited the death of his past life, he reacted. That, dear ones, is the crystalline grid. It was there when he passed. It talked to him about his own passage. And for a moment or two, there was sorrow and grief as he remembered as a child what it was like to pass over the veil when he was a young man in battle. That is what the crystalline grid does. And it is Gaia-based. Your Akash was shared by Gaia. Oh, it gets better. There is a system that we will review with you. And the system is all about you and your Akash on this planet. We don't dwell on these things because we don't want you to. The systems that are in place that you might even call spiritual accounting are energy systems. Just like there is a system when you come and go from the planet of how you choose the next incarnation, who is involved, how, how many times are you one gender or another. It is not a roll of the dice. It is not random. It is beautiful, it is planned, it is by you, there's a system there, and it works. There's also a system for how Gaia keeps track of who comes and goes. The cave of creation. Misunderstood by almost everyone. It is not a three-dimensional cave and yet it has attributes of one. It is a multi-dimensional place on the planet beneath the planet, within the planet, that will never be discovered. It does not radiate energy. You cannot find it and won't. But it is the coming and going point that is the alliance of the human soul and life on planet Earth. And in this cave, metaphorically, metaphorically, there is a crystal for every single soul that has ever been here or potentially ever will be. Now that is a tough one for a linear human being with linear time. Where you will say, how could that be when the future is not happened yet, has not been here, how can you have a crystal for humans who haven't showed up yet? And the answer is because the potentials of what you would do is always there in front of you, as real as reality itself. The cave is something that keeps track of your Akash. When you pass over the veil, three days after what you would call death, you leave the planet. But the crystal in the cave retains your Akash. Your experiences on the planet do not leave with you as you return to creative source. That belongs to Gaia. When you return, right at the point of birth, first breath, when you're on your own, the crystal releases the Akash to your DNA. 
and you pick up where you were and you keep going. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. The planet is the storehouse of remembering what you did here on this earth. Therefore you would say at the heart and the depths of Gaia itself is your Akash. There is a partnership with this planet that is so strong that there is nothing you can list that is apart from it. Nothing. And that is the lesson. There is one more thing. We revealed to you not too long ago a missing piece one that you have suspected all along there is a backup system for your Akash for in the cave it is static it is remembered by the crystals metaphorically the crystalline remembers vibration but there also has to be a living library of your Akash because your Akash represents life on the planet, not a static remembrance in a cave. Complex as it might seem and occur to you, there is an alliance between the static remembrance and the living remembrance. This planet is involved in remembering humanism. All that is here is a partnership with human beings and their souls for what you are doing. And the living library of the human Akash you will find in the whales of the planet. They don't know it. Not really. They don't have the intellect to know it. But they know it. Those who have had encounters with whales are never the same. Those who have had a whale look them in the eye, they'll remember it the long as they live. Because the whale knows you at some level. Consciousness of humans is seen and understood and actually is attractive to cetaceans. Now those of you who understand biology know that a dolphin is categorized as a whale. Are you connecting the dots? The dolphins know you. The only mammal or fish in the ocean that will recognize human consciousness, turn direction and head toward you. The mammals of the earth will avoid human contact. It is intrinsic, it is instinctual not to go next to a human or any other unknown mammal. If you go into a paddock with contained animals, they will run to the fence unless they know you. But in the open ocean, the dolphins will sense you and turn towards you and check you out. At some level, a whale, although not as friendly, will know not to harm you. So many stories in the open ocean of sailors seeing this, knowing this, having experiences with this, being awed by it, and now you know why. It is so obvious, dear ones, that they are different than any other mammal in existence. How does this feel to you? Does it change how you feel about the earth or the mountains or the trees or the water? It should. You see the majesty of the mountain and it sees the majesty of you. The earth exists for you. All of it. And the Akash very much allied with Gaia. And that's the message of a letter A. And so it is.